Walking around central London, you are constantly reminded of some of the greatest feats of engineering at the grander scale. So buildings like St Paul's over there or this bridge that I'm standing on. But if you want to get involved in engineering, if you want to really understand the, the principles of what makes good engineering, you don't even have to leave your home. A piece of paper is a wonderful thing. With a piece of paper, you can do all sorts of things. You can write uh, a great novel or you could draw a picture or you can open up an entire world of exciting engineering. Because with a piece of paper, of course, you can become an aeronautical engineer just by making a paper aeroplane. Now, there's all kinds of different ways of making paper aeroplanes depending on what you want to do. You can make planes that go a long way or stay in the air for a long time or do boomerangs and tricks and come back to you. When I was a kid, they kind of always looked a little bit like this. That's how we used to do it. And they, they fly, but they don't fly very well. So I'm going to show you a different way of making a plane. This is the world record distance method of making uh, a paper aeroplane. Right, you want to try and get the folds as accurately as you can. And I actually use um, a card, like a credit card, just to scrape down the folds, just to get them really, really accurate. There's all kinds of resources online about how to make brilliant paper planes. So the secret is to just explore. Okay, that goes like that. Get my card and scrape that down. Pull that across. Now I want to make a fold up this way. Yeah, it's starting to come along. You really want to get each side perfectly symmetrical, really, really line up those um, angles and those ends as, as well as you can. That gets folded over like that. Right, there we go. The secret is to have the angle of the wings a bit like that. We call that a dihedral angle. So rather than having the wings down like that, as you might do for a sort of paper dart, you actually want them up like that. And that gives the whole aircraft a lot more stability. And then it's really that kind of balance of lift and speed. So what we can do is we can give it some little elevators at the back just by turning the ends up. So here we have a bra, not my bra, I hasten to add, uh, but a bra nonetheless. And a bra is actually a real triumph uh, of design and engineering. Design, of course, aesthetically, it's got to look nice, it's got to look good, it's got to make the wearer look good, and functionality as well. So it has to provide mechanical support, but it's also got to provide that support while maintaining flexibility and freedom for the wearer to be able to move about. And it does that uh, largely due to the materials used, a whole group of modern materials from the last century. So things like polyester, spandex, uh, this elastic here, the foam that's in the padding here. It's a brilliant example, and that underwire, a brilliant example of how materials and design and engineering can all fit together to make a, the, a perfect bit of clothing like that. But there's an interesting story about the history of bra design, which I really love. Playtex, which is a company that made bras and girdles back in the 1960s, because of their expertise with engineering and materials, were taken on by NASA to manufacture and engineer possibly the most iconic bit of clothing of all time. It's that bit of clothing behind me, the spacesuits that let human beings explore another world were made by Playtex uh, and the skill of the women whose job it was to sew bras and girdles and uh, structured underwear went on to make those. So this is one of the great triumphs, I think, of human civilization. Well, it is for me, at least. The bacon sandwich. I love a bacon sandwich. And very often we don't make the connection between food and engineering, but of course the two are intrinsically linked. If you think about 
food. Every step of the way, engineering is involved, whether it's the production of food, the manufacture of food, the growing of food, through to the processing uh, of food, through to the transportation of food all around the world, every step. The engineering behind a bacon sandwich has an interesting story the last few years because, of course, when Tim Peake went up to the International Space Station, he was asked, well, what food would you like to take with you? And, of course, Tim, being a sensible chap, uh, wanted to take a bacon sandwich with him. With him. And so they had to engineer a sandwich that w would withstand space flight. And one of the things they had to come up with was the bread itself. Because, of course, bread makes crumbs. Normally, crumbs uh, fall to the floor when you're eating something or fall in your bed if you're eating your sandwich in bed, which can be really nasty and, and uncomfortable. Uh, but, of course, in the space station, crumbs would just float around everywhere and they could damage the systems and you don't want crumbs floating around in the space station. So a new type of bread had to be engineered. They had to think about the flavour of the, the bacon itself because your taste buds change when you're in space for all kinds of physiological reasons. This is a bacon sandwich that has been engineered to fly in space. And there it is. You can see Heston's name, Heston Blumenthal, very famous chef. All kinds of engineering processes that had to go into making of this, uh, not least the can itself, which is an aluminium and plastic can designed to be very light and to also keep the bacon sandwich inside sterile. So that is a, an engineered space bacon sarni which I would eat, but unfortunately I've just noticed that the date is past its sell-by date, 2017. So I'll just have to eat this one. It's a job that anybody who's curious about the world or has an inquisitive mind can get involved in. So if that is you, STEM Learning have put together some fantastic activities for you to explore engineering, science, maths, computing. So go over to the STEM Learning website.